Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service. Um, for any that don't know me, my name is Pat, and I'll be leading this service this morning. You are all very welcome, and I hope you enjoy your time with us. Is that any better? Okay, I'll start again, just to make sure other people can hear me. Good morning, my name is Pat, and I will be leading this service for you this morning. I hope you enjoy it as um, a good time of worship to our Lord. We will start our service this morning using the green books, and we will start on page two. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Open our lips, O Lord, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Give us, joy of save, give us the joy of your saving help and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving to hear and receive God's holy word to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by his power may we give ourselves to the service of God. We now come to the time where we say sorry for the things we have done wrong. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins, our sins, and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. And now Katie will come to lead us in our first song, which is Restore, O Lord. Hymn number 579.
so we're on page four. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now, through the deep waters of death, you have brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. May Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. We turn to page six, we'll say our gospel canticle. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning and shall be forever. Amen. And now Katie will come with our readings. Morning. I think I need to move my music stand so I'm not kind of wandering behind. (laughs) Um, Our epistle reading is from the book of James, chapter 2, verses 1 to 17. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes also, also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourself and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised? those who love him. But you have dishonoured the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble name of him to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbour as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favouritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said you shall not commit adultery also said you shall not commit murder. If you do not commit adultery but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by actions, is dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our gospel reading is from Mark chapter 7, verses 24 to 37. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply, you may go, the demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed, and the demon had gone. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk, and they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he took him aside, away from the crowds, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephatha, which means be opened. At this, the man's ears were opened. His tongue was loosened and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone. But the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning to you and a warm welcome to those at home watching us online. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you will open up that last scripture that Kate has just brought us and show us something that's new and relevant to our daily living. And we pray in Jesus' name. Beginning with Abraham, God had built the Jewish nation to be special to him and to be kept separate from the pagan nations with whom they came into contact. With hindsight, We know that with the coming of Jesus, God's people became marked out not by nationality, but by their faith in Jesus. Commentators suggest that by this particular journey, Jesus was signalling that new order which was to follow uh, when Jesus came. Uh, uh, And had gone through um, the crucifixion, resurrection and ascension the new church. And under that order, Abraham's inheritance was free to Gentiles as well as Jews. And um, that was a, a brand new thought. The conversation which Jesus had with the Libyan-born Greek woman, Syrophoenician in our reading, um, was um, uh, really supporting uh, that idea of that new order. It was Jesus, uh, one of Jesus' early outreach to new people to outside the Jewish faith. Jesus seems to respond unusually harshly to the woman when she asks for healing for her daughter. Uh, verse 27. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. One of the Hallmarks of groups of people can be a tendency to become arrogant. And that was touched on in our epistle reading. People not in the group can easily become seen as second class. The Nazis in World War II went even further. They declared themselves a superior race and treated Jews, homosexuals and many other people as being subhuman. In Nazi concentration camps, people were given numbers instead of their names, all part of the dehumanizing, the distancing, which made genocide a possibility. And it was also in the Western civilized world that slavery was at its height 
from the 1400s to the 1800s. And those enslaved were also treated as less than human by their abusers. That made running highly profitable businesses like sugar and cotton on the backs of slaves a reality. At the time of our reading, the very exclusiveness of the Jews had led some of them to become quite arrogant in their attitude to outsiders. And Jesus chose to use a common Jewish parallel by suggesting to this Greek woman that foreigners like that are ranked level with dogs. On the surface, uh, this was insulting and certainly wouldn't pass any modern test of political correctness. However, I believe that there may have been something of a twinkle in Jesus' eye as he spoke to the woman. He was immediately drawn to her genuineness and faith. I think he knew that she wouldn't come back at him with some anti-Jewish comment, which would have been quite understandable. In fact, the woman didn't challenge the parallel Jesus had drawn at all. Instead, she went along with it, pleading in effect that she was only asking for crumbs from under the Jewish table. Perhaps, too, she was encouraged that Jesus chose the word for a pet dog rather than the more common one describing a scavenger. Jesus responded with the only distance healing recorded in Mark's Gospel. He sends the woman home to find her child well and no longer demon-possessed. Such was the power of God in Jesus. In our reading, the writer of Mark's Gospel then goes on to record a second miracle. The setting changes in just one verse, verse 31. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of Decapolis. It may sound that he just took a walk around the corner, but if we look at a map of the area, we realize that in those few words, Jesus went first some 20 miles north to Sidon, and then looped south again to pass the Sea of Galilee to go into Decapolis. Decapolis, literally the ten towns, was the area in which Jesus' healing of a demon-possessed man was recorded earlier in this same gospel. That was the dramatic healing, you may remember, where there were many demons and they all ended up in a suicidal herd of pigs uh, who uh, jumped uh, into the sea. There must have been many people in that area who remembered that healing. Uh, on that occasion, after being healed, the man had wanted to join Jesus' band of followers, but Jesus told him to return to his own people and tell them of his experience. So Jesus was no longer... Uh, in foreign territory. He was back for the second miracle in his home territory. And it was there that a man is brought to Jesus who is deaf and whose speech is very difficult to understand. The people who brought the man begged Jesus to heal him. Jesus' response to their plea was first to take the man aside from the crowd and the account goes on, Jesus then put his fingers into the man's ears and he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said, Ephatha, which means be opened. At this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone. But the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Jesus healed the foreign woman's daughter without even seeing her. By contrast, he healed the deaf man in a very hands-on way. One healing was remote and the other one, other one was very personal. <clears throat> what food for thought is there for us as we consider these accounts of two of Jesus' healings. First, as with all of Jesus' miracles, the power of God was demonstrated. Where miraculous healing is involved, the individual is changed dramatically. So in many cases, are the people around them. 
The food for thought here is the power of the God whom we seek to serve and his willingness and desire to see people and their lives changed for the better. Second, Jesus going to a foreign area to, to teach and even his use of the dogs analogy remind us that discrimination cannot be part of Christian living. We dare not, again back to our epistle reading, we can't dare not regard any other human being, however different from us, as being inferior. Neither dare we categorise any human being as being subhuman. Food for thought here is our whole attitude in our relationships. Is there any discrimination in my thinking or yours? And the final food for thought is the reality that Jesus didn't heal all the people around him who were sick. Our experience teaches us that the same is true today. Sometimes sick people for whom we pray are not healed. Perhaps in this we're looking for the ability to accept that God's understanding is often different from human understanding. At times when we cannot understand, our prayer must be that we will trust God. Trust him that the outcomes he brings are, in the end, always the best and most appropriate. Amen. Thank you, John. There's a lot of food for thought there. Um, I think especially the question of when people don't get healed after we've prayed so, so much for them. And sometimes it's hard to trust God in those circumstances, but if we do, I think we benefit from it in the long run. Um, we're now joined together in Psalm 125. give you a moment to find that in your Bibles. And Bill was very kindly handing some out to those that haven't got them. We'll just give them a second. Okay. I think everybody's got a Bible. I think we're almost there. We can read this together, please. Psalm 125. And together. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. The scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land of allotted to the righteous to do evil. Lord, do good to those who are good, to those who are upright in heart, but to those who mourn. Sorry, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forevermore. Amen. We come to our second hymn, which is All Heaven Declares, which can be found on page 14. That's hymn number 14. Please stand, please. 
your presence or at home if you wish. <laughs> If you remain standing, if you're able to, we will say the creed next, which can be found on page seven. Together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit and we'll come to our time of prayer. I'll begin with our collect for today, which is on your notice sheets. Merciful Father, your Son came to save us and bore our sins on the cross. We trust in your mercy and know your love rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In our prayers, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, please reply, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us come before the Lord as we pray for the church, the world and for our own needs. Give your wisdom and heavenly grace to all those who serve in this diocese of Chelmsford, especially for our new Bishop Gooley, and to all others who hold office in your church, that, by their service, faith may abound and cause, and cause your kingdom to increase. Father, we pray for all our world leaders, for our royal family, for our government, for the heads of state in Europe, the Commonwealth and the United Nations, that they will all make wise decisions and govern in the best way for all your people. We also pray for all our community leaders and those in public office dealing with difficult situations, especially all those that are surrounding the ongoing pandemic. We pray for your church here in this parish. We give thanks that we are a church with a mission and with a welcome for those in need around us. Help us to serve people without judgment and meet their needs. We give thanks and pray for all in our leadership team, for all who faithfully do the different tasks that are needed to run this church. Sometimes they go unseen, Lord, but we know that they're doing them because they've been done. 
And we don't always remember that the people are doing those small things which are so important. We pray for our church congregation. Strengthen the ministry that is in all of us, Lord, that we may all recognise and acknowledge the gifts that you give us and step out in faith as you call us. We pray for all those attending our Alpha courses and we pray that they will grow in knowledge and love of you. And as our schools and colleges go back next week, we pray for confidence and a willingness to learn. We pray for the teachers and staff that they will have enthusiasm and energy to make schools a safe and happy place of learning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our troubled world. We pray for those caught up in the tragedy of war, pandemic and climate change. We pray especially for Afghanistan, for its new government and for those that are left behind living in fear. I'm just going to leave a moment of silence for you to pray for anywhere that's especially on your heart at this moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all those who are trying to make a difference. We continue to pray for those affected by COVID, long COVID, and all those who are grieving because of it. We pray for the NHS staff as they cope with this pandemic. Let there be a breakthrough in the treatments that can be provided. We pray for all those whose treatments have been delayed because of this crisis and their illnesses are getting worse as a result. We pray for all those who are affected in this way. We pray for the families and friends that support those who are ill. We pray for all those who are affected by climate change, for those who have lost homes and now fear catching COVID. We pray that the authorities will be able to provide food and shelter. And Lord, we pray that you bring your peace to all those who are suffering today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the needs of our loved ones, our friends and neighbours, and that we may be mindful of the different needs, differing needs of those that we meet. Help us to be there when needed, sharing the happy parts of life and to be supportive during the lower times. We remember all in special need this morning and bring them before you, those who are ill at home or in hospital and all those who care for them. We pray for those who feel no one cares for them or about them, for the unemployed, the poor, the lonely, the depressed, and those suffering injustice and neglect. May we come beside those in need as you make them known to us. And now, in a moment of silence, please pray for those persons you know who need your prayers today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves. Faithful God, we thank you that your wisdom not only enlightens us, but and transforms us and guides us in our daily walk. Help us always to accompany our words of faith with deeds of action. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our risen Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we're now gathering our prayers and praises into one. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray, pray on page eight. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. <coughs> Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now we come to our final hymn, which is hymn number 187, God is Love. Sorry, I'll notice this first, sorry. Stay where you are. not church without notices is it um i i do hope you've taken a notice sheet today if you're here in person there's a great deal on it um, as we start to open up again so uh just to bring to your attention that this week the cafe will be starting again it's going to be a sort of scaled down cafe we're going to be meeting at the back um can i say oh is it next week sorry no next week for cafe sorry you're right See, this is why you should read this. Okay, next week the cafe will start again and next week will be the craft sessions. Um, I do want to say a big thank you to those who did the clear out. I hope you can see how lovely and tidy it is. Um, I know you can't if you're at home, but especially this area is now just beautifully clear. We can actually see our font. Um, It's not surrounded by rubbish. Sorry, okay, ignore that. Next week is cafe and craft. This week... We're starting Guitars and Worship on Wednesday night, and we're starting Gospel Choir. So we're trying to start slowly. We're just starting our things bit by bit. Um, For those of you in leadership, there's a Fabric and Finance Team Zoom on Tuesday, Core Leaders on Monday, and Monday week is PCC, if you are a PCC member. Okay, any questions about that? (laughs) When we do start cafe, sorry, it's just in my mind, it is going to be uh, slightly more low-key. We're going to have it at the back. We have got refreshments today after church. Yay! We might not have biscuits, but you can have a cup of tea. Um, On Saturday, Cecilia is being ordained at Chelmsford Cathedral. Um, Obviously, we're very disappointed that we can't send a coach. Um, It's still limited numbers, but there will be a link online, as there was to Tim's. We don't have that yet. I'm going to Chelmsford this afternoon for um, training incumbent orientation. Cecilia is there all day today. So um, we will be able to um, find out what the link is for that. The new rotors are up. They started this week. Um, Please do have a look at them. They're in the porch. Uh, If you do need a paper copy, we can organize that. If you're the sort of person who has an email, I can send it to you by email. Um, Or you can take a photo on your phone if you're that sophisticated. Um, I do have one piece of sad news. Uh, The little black and white cat that thought it was Jesus that would sit in our manger, um, the neighbour came round to say it had been hit by a car. So we're very sad because the cat was very much part of our church family and would wander in here in the middle of services. We're not quite sure who it belongs to. I've seen it in the window of one of the adjacent flats. So uh, do pray for that family um, and we will miss our church cat. Thank you. And just to say, um, there are a box of chocolates on the table that um, was given to me by a kind neighbour. Unfortunately, I can't eat them, so I'm hoping you will all take at least one, please. (laughs) That's not nice. (laughs) Uh, Right, now we will come to our last hymn, which is God is Love, number 187. No? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> he wasn't talking to me. <laughs>
Thank you, Katie and Bill for singing. We come now to our conclusion. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let's say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Please um, do take some tea and refreshments and see you again. <laughs>